What's going on YouTube? So, pardon the mess. So I got the engine on the frame now. Um, this took a little, it's actually really easy. So you just, if uh, the only problem is you need somebody to hold the frame uh, just in case it topples over from the stand. So, uh, or unless you can't carry the engine yourself. Um, I'm working by myself here. So um, I was very, I, I was just very careful not to tip over the, the frame, you know, I, I tried to angle it the best I can without um, scratching the frame, of course, because I just painted some parts of it. So um, the rear axle nut here goes through the engine. So lining it up was also a challenge um, with the swing arm and everything. So the bolt goes through that holds the engine in place. So that's the first thing I try to uh, focus on is trying to get that bolt through so that um, once I got it on there, I can work on everything else without tightening everything else up and it's still gonna be in place. So um, I this part is like a relief because right now I'm that much closer to finishing the bike. It's finally on there. Um, I still have to torque um, the sprocket, front sprocket there. I changed it to a new one. Um, I still, I couldn't do it on the table because I, I have nothing to hold the engine over. Um, they want you to torque that nut there to 100 like 10 or 105 pounds of uh force so so if, we, if without this being fixed in a place in place uh and not on anything holding it together um the engine will just topple over because you're trying to put uh, a lot of force on the nut there so i'm um, I, I decided to just put it on the bike uh frame build um all the mounts and everything else and then i will torque it to 110 pounds so it's held in place by this bike here so uh, there's that. I got new rear sprockets also. You can see that. Um, I have a new chain going on on there too. So my only next challenge is the electrical. So I hopefully I have everything um, mapped out. Uh, I do have some references. I, I took a lot of pictures. So uh, also the, the oil hoses. Uh, I might, there is this uh, hose here. If you can see that right there that is that has a, a, a filter like a screen filter that everyone tells you uh, you know says to remove and clean out so I'm gonna do that before I put new oil in and uh, I hope I have enough engine ice to fill the the radiators so the radiators are here I replaced the hoses with brand new hoses um, yeah and there's my old electrical wiring harness. I'm taking some stuff that didn't come with the brand new wiring harness because it's, you know, so to make sure, especially the battery um, leads didn't come with the new one. So I, I had to transfer that and just wipe it clean and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, so I'm really happy that I managed to get the engine on there now. Um, yeah, so that next step is I'm going to put the the um not too not super tight but i'm gonna put the engine mounts here and here and there's a bolt down here somewhere so yeah this stand here the one i bought for the harley a long time ago you guys know i never used it it's so useful right now so make sure to get yourself one when you have a moment all right I'll see you guys on the next part hey what's going on youtube so i just want to get um you guys uh, a look uh, of what the progress looks like right now. So you see the carb is in here installed. Um, it's pretty hard to sandwich um, the carb between the airbox, engine block, and here. Um, but with the sub, because I could still manip manipulate the subframe, I can remove it and wiggle it around. It made it easier, but if everything else is attached to here, um, I've heard stories that it's pretty hard to wrestle it in there. But yeah, so so far, um, Mine is pretty easy since I don't have a lot of things installed right now on the bike. But it's still, um, make sure, you know, it's hard to make sure that you have the boots covering all the necessary ports. You don't have, you don't want any air leaks because the bike's going to run bad. Uh, yeah, so just doing all that. I'm almost, um, I'm almost to the point where I have to do wiring. Um, I'm still working on some of the oil lines. Um, of course, the radiator has to be mounted. What, what takes time is just finding the right bolts for the right uh, location because I didn't um, label them. I wasn't organized like that. So, um, yeah, I guess I'm paying the price for that now. So, I'm...
pretty much at a stopping point. Uh, basically, I'm just tired. So, uh, from the last uh, video, uh, I'm not sure where I left off, but it's definitely not at this point. So, I have all the wirings, the carb, airbox, um, some of the fenders, and especially some of the controls here are already installed. So, I have uh, shorty levers, the stock, perch, uh, wiring, and I have... Um, it's braided lines for front and rear uh, brakes and a new um, throttle cable put that all on there I haven't put the um, the uh, what do you call that the crash bars um, those crash bars not those but like an ex that's an example mine is still in the packaging but uh, I haven't put those on I still haven't figured out like the cable slack and routing and stuff like that that's why i didn't um, want to close this section up so um, um i still have to figure out the wiring so that's one of the things that i have to do is wiring uh verifying that all the hoses are connected all the electricals are connected uh oil lines and coolant lines so those are my main um concern right now so i i got the chain on um and adjusted it to the point where you have some good slack so it still has some good slack and yeah i tightened those up torqued those i got my um my msr it's just like a generic i'm not sure if this is a like a popular brand or anything i just picked it up because i mine uh the, the stock one when i got the bike is it looks mangled i'm probably gonna replace the brake sex brake side too it just looks uh messed up so um once uh, I got the brakes um, bled, then I will torque these. When I set it to the ground, I'll torque these and close that part too, close the, the washer over the nut there. And this part here, oh sorry, this part here is the, the shift linkage. And I haven't put the arm on that yet. Uh, it's just, I'll tackle it on some other time, I'm pretty tired. So here's the FCR 39 MX carb. This is a very expensive carb. Uh, cost me, this one was like 512 bucks for a carburetor. So better be worth it. So it, I hope I got, I got it pretty much uh, secured in there. It's just that, uh, yeah, the boots, the boots on there. It's just, uh, this one, I don't have a clamp for this. I'm not sure if I should have a clamp. But, um, uh, well, what can you do? So that's secure. I'm going to just, you know, overall look at all the things that I installed here and make sure everything is secure. But for the most part, um, I'm pretty happy. I'm not happy about the, the like, not the exhaust. The exhaust is not here yet. So um, I'm not happy about the suspension. The suspension on DRZ is super mushy um, from factory. You can max it out as much as you want, as much as you want, but in the end, you have to replace the spring, the shock spring, and you have to replace the fork spring. So I'm, I'm probably gonna um, tear, tear this, tear this apart sometime, or maybe have just have somebody do it. Um, I, mean, I actually, I, I could just have paid a shop to do all this, and but I just wanted to experience. So after I complete this project, I'm probably gonna have somebody take care of the suspension because I honestly I don't trust myself with suspension I want somebody professional to tune it and you know all that so uh yeah I got it's super mushy when I actually when I set it on the ground and sit on it it's just you know I, I guess I can tweak some of the settings there it's just still in general when I rode my friend's DRZ it's still mushy I, I'm 200 pounds you know so it's just I guess for smaller guys it's fine but for me it's just it's it's wobbly so uh there's a lot of hoses down here that i still have to trim um all all the vent lines from the carb these are all drain hoses they're not they're, they're not going to be connected to anything it's just um you know uh i might maybe just cut them like up to here or something the blue the blue uh, lines look good it complements the bike's uh blue wheels and yeah the chain's good Typical um, OEM uh, gearing. Um, 
Yeah, nothing else on this side that I can talk about. Um, I yeah, like I said, the the rear brake lines are now steel braided, Galfer brand. Uh, this one is kind of touching the spring. Hopefully, that's not a that's not too bad. Uh, I have to ble uh, bleed both brakes because I don't have any brakes. <laughs> I don't have any brakes right now, so there's fluid in there. It's just there's air pockets everywhere. So um. Also, coolant. I have to. Uh, I have to put some coolant on. I don't know if I have enough um, engine ice. I think this one. Let me show you guys what I'm going to put. Uh, okay. I'm sh this is basically what I'm gonna put. I put this on the Ninja 250, uh, my wife's bike, and it worked really well. Um, you don't have to mix this with water or anything. It's just you. Uh, I, I think I have to buy more. I think it's. I think this is uh, two gallons at least. I think, because this is a gallon, well, we'll find out, I'll check all that before I feel, uh, before I start filling it in, um, I have, um, oil in that box, but yeah, that's like, those are last steps, these are just, uh, I have my manual chain adjuster here too, so, I would say a good, maybe how fast, it depends on how fast I work on this, I... I need to get my friend's bike in here just so I could see um, the the wiring and how his bike looks. You know, I need some I need some reference because the manual only goes so far. The way the, the, these are this these things are are routed um, all around the, the bike. I need to see it. I need to I just need to see it. So all this basically is from researching online how things looked and pictures that I took. But intricate stuff like in here, you can't really, there's no diagrams for that. So, um, yeah, that's all I'm worried about right now. Properly routing all these cables. Um, there's not much you can do because of how big the carb is. It kind of eliminated some space that's that used to be under here. You can route wires through here. But now you have wire, you can only run wires down the sides here. And it kind of interferes with when you put the tank on because he has to go. He has a slot to go into this and now it's blocking it. So those are my like little uh, small things here and there that I have to tackle. Um, but it's getting close. Uh, it's getting close. I'm really happy with the progress. Um, yeah, like I said, once once it's built, there's still a lot more things to be done. Suspension. And probably brakes. I'm probably gonna replace this with um, something R RCS or something. I know it's overkill, but I'm I'm really building this to be a track bike. So um, right now it's far from that. I that or I just ride the GS. But I really that's why I bought this bike. I just I, I want to I want to go to the track with this. And by spring I need this to be ready. I don't want this to be sitting like this.